Hi everyone and welcome to IT Chronicles 10 and Tech. I'm Kirsty McGowan and I'm here today with my co-host Ryan Schmira. Hi Ryan. Hi Kirsty, how are you? Very well, thanks. And Terry Brown. Hi Terry. Hi Kirsty. And today we are here talking with Scott Rogers from Monza Cloud. Hi Scott. Hey Kirsty, how are you? Great to be here. Yeah, very well, thanks. Now Scott, there's a lot of organizations out there struggling with legacy apps and how they're going to modernize and get to the cloud. You know, there, there are a lot of problems there. So what are the biggest challenges you see for those organizations? One of the biggest challenges I've seen is talking to a number of CIOs is the obstacles around wanting to move legacy apps to the cloud, but the cost associated with, with moving them. So a few options uh, um, exist around you know, the, there are a few challenges around the, the external interfaces, the dependencies, um, and legacy.net apps in particular is those are ones that have things that can't be easily containerized and move to the cloud in a number, number of instances. So by looking at them and segmenting them and determining what you want to sunset or retire or how to handle, that gives you a number of different um, approaches to handling those challenges. Okay. And so... Yeah, you know, obviously you're you're out there you're out there talking to people all the time. So, what's the first things these organisations should look at doing? So, what what I tell them to do is, you know, first is to understand what your application portfolio looks like, because as you look at that application portfolio, there's a number of different options that arise. As you can look to retire applications, you can look to sunset applications, um, you can look and identify which ones you want to containerize and, and cloud optimize. And then which ones require refactoring to become cloud native? Um, one of the big things around that is understanding what is the cost versus value to the business. Um, each one of those should be evaluated and weighted based on that and, and that value back to the business, along with the working knowledge of the code base, the security, and, and, the, and how to mitigate the risk associated with it. It's not all technology driven. It's very important to engage the business. Um, and when you look at it, is not to necessarily have to go through all of that before you start migrating apps, is start the process of assessing, and in parallel that, start testing and determining what works for your organization based on each one of those different swim lanes. And Scott, so how do you, how do you work with an organization to, to sort of help, help sort of prioritize um, you know, what they should move, how they should move it, and, and what the savings are going to be for an organization? Well, I think one of the big things is, you know, as you start looking at that, and it's not necessarily taking out, you have to go through everything first, but as you start assessing and understanding what the portfolio looks like, what's the low-hanging fruit? What are the ones that are simple to get off of the legacy platform, simple get up, and, and low cost? Because those are going to drive out um, hardware dependencies and operations dependencies that you're dealing with right now. And then understanding as you start to look at the more complex ones is what's that right path? Because... There, there's different approaches that can work is there's not one approach that is with the complex ones you could refactor or you can containerize. You have to assess and understand what are the long-term implications of it because, you know, by just moving it over, you may be locking yourself into one cloud provider or locking yourself into decisions from cost, from security, from business or, or uh, industry agility that aren't necessarily the best thing for your business side, but may be a good technology decision. So really understanding that and trying to factor all of those things in. As you look at, at the costs as well as the benefits of migrating apps to the cloud and modernizing your IT environment, what are the things the company should be balancing in terms of short-term versus long-term costs and gains? Great question, Ryan. Um, you know, when I think about it, I think about portability, I think about um, future cost predictability, because that's one of the things right now in the cloud world that honestly, nobody knows what the costs are going to be um, based on different services in the next two to three years. Um, mm -hmm. Any one of the providers could go up and down. Um, also on, on understanding your business landscape and understanding how important is business agility and, and that security aspect. Those are all things that when I look at it right now, you know, there's a lot of people that are moving and, and see the benefits of cloud but not thinking about the, the multi-cloud strategy. And I think that's a very important thing as you think about the future is not locking your business into a, a single provider um, and giving yourself flexibility because I, I talk to people all the time and, you know, there's a lot of companies out there that we thought would be around 10, just 10 years ago that aren't anymore. And you've got to think about what's best for your business and providing that agility. Um, and, and also knowing, you know, if something happens, 
thinking about what are the, the kind of unknowns of the, the nuclear cost around if a provider goes down and you've put everything onto it and, and developed everything onto it without portability and without that agility, what happens as, as far as moving out in short term for outages or long term if, the, if something happens and that provider's not around anymore? Yeah, that's a good point. One of the things um, I guess a lot of companies worry about when they when when they're looking at at moving to the cloud, especially with these legacy apps, is is security. I mean, so what are the special concerns around moving these these older apps into the cloud with with security? So, uh, so I think it's a great question. I think it's it's building in best practices. You know, there are, there are frameworks and there are accelerators and tools out there that allow you to look at these legacy apps to modernize where appropriate without uh, requiring you to refactor and recode the whole application. And when you do that, then you're taking in, into account best practices and, and helping to lock down in specific areas, but not having to build an application from scratch. Understanding how do you, how do you build the uh, uh, defense, defense in depth, uh, put different security parameters around it and understanding those applications. I think one of the things the cloud providers are really good at um, is their approach to security is by far above what any organization do just because of their size and hyperscale and, and what, I mean, they're the most targeted on the planet now. Mm -hmm. But when you go in is you're only as good as your applications. So really looking at those and understanding and, and what is a risk um, and being able to apply new patterns and practices to that to update the, the places uh, appropriately. What, are the, what, is the, what, so what is the timeline for doing this? Does that vary based on the size of the organization, the number of applications? Uh, I mean, is there like a, is there like a set timeline for migrating ap applications? I, what I would say is it really comes down to every organization is different because when you're moving to the cloud, it's not just about the technology. Um, yes, the application stack size and scale has a big impact there, but it's also about a culture because when you move to the cloud, thinking about how do you change to a continuous integration, continuous deployment um, approach and using containers and, and how do you update back to the security concerns that Kirsty mentioned a, min a minute ago, is you've got to understand how do, you, how do you protect your organization very rapidly in those scenarios. So there, there's a culture and a people and process change that comes into play as well. And it really depends on each organization on you know, how mature they are to accept those changes, those implications, and, and change that, that culture in the environment. And that's when, once you can understand that and kind of map that out, then you can focus on the tools and the technology and those processes associated with. But a lot of organizations that we work with and, and see, um, you know, that, that whole combining the development teams and the operations team, it's an important part of pulling those together because they think differently. And as you move to a cloud first world, it is very much integrated in how you have to think when you're developing um, around uh, moving things over into operations. Yes, there's a lot, of, a lot of things to think about. Absolutely, yeah. the cloud is complex and you know, the, the thing I would say is, is I saw just last week Microsoft releasing um, about six different ways to manage applications through containers depending on what your business needs were and what your technology needs were. And you know, that in itself, when you look at, at a number of developers out there and thinking about how to operationalize and the infrastructure components, um, it's overwhelming. And so one of the things that we try to do is talk to clients about, you know, how do you simplify that? Because there's a lot of different ways to accomplish the same goal. And frankly, some of them are, are very, very much too complex for some organizations. So looking at each and which one meets your business needs, but also simplifies and, and helps improve your speed to market. Because I think that's the big thing. It's, it's moving as fast as the business needs you to. Um, because that, that's where most of our clients are seeing the biggest challenge as these new technologies come into play. So Scott, you mentioned that, you know, this migration and, and modernization can be overwhelming to folks. And I can hear that there's a lot of changes that are required, both technical and cultural in order to support this. And I'm wondering, you know, what guidance do you give folks in terms of when you should look to upgrade and retrofit your existing apps to, to work in the cloud versus when you should consider replacing them with applications that were cloud native and built to work in the new environment? I think that it really comes down to kind of cost benefit analysis. Um, you know, as I look at it and, and there's a lot of those that are new, new costs associated with it, but what is the long-term business benefit 
of whatever function it's providing. You know, one of the things to your point is there's a lot of folks I see out there that have legacy applications. Those may be Lotus Notes applications uh, going all the way back because there's still a lot of those out there. They may be legacy Windows, legacy um, mainframe applications. But a lot of those now in some of the software as a service, the SAPs, the Salesforce, those type of applications, that same functionality is already included. So that's one of the key things is understanding when you're looking at new enterprise SaaS-based apps, can you retire applications based on the functionality that's already inherent in there? And then which ones do you need to just move over because they're, they're required but not necessarily truly, I guess, strategic? And then which ones are the, are the strategic platforms that are going to help enable your business of the future? And so that's really as I look at it, and, and each client's a little bit different on figuring out what is that, that matrix associated with that and what's important to them. But that's how I started is looking at that because there's a lot of different ways from SaaS to PaaS to, to infrastructure as a service um, to solve these problems. And it's getting a handle around those different things and which ones give them that business agility and, and, and help them have a competitive advantage in whatever industry they're in. Well, thank you, Scott. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today, and I think there's there's a lot people can can learn from the things that you've been that you've been talking about, and uh, maybe they want to go out and check out the Monza Cloud website and see just what services you have available to help them out. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the time today. Yes, Thanks sir. a lot. Yes. Thanks, Scott.